Hi, I'm Urban Sheep and Stray from TrueSleevers.com and today I'm going to talk to you about lots of lovely lentils. Because as a matter of fact, there are several. I know in the United States most people when they say lentils mean little brown ones. I'm going to introduce you to some new ones and tell you how to cook them in your pressure cooker. So here are the topics we're going to cover today. Uh, pulses, beans and legumes. What are the differences? Do we care? Uh, one pulse for lives. In other words, uh, some grains can be used one of four different ways and I'll talk to you about that. Uh, a question about whether or not to soak, which comes up often, especially if you uh, pressure cooking. You, do you need to soak a bean? Which type of beans need soaking? And then the other topic about um, uh, giving you the equivalent for English and Hindi names. When you go into an Indian store to buy lentils, it's often very confusing. And so I'm going to give you a chart. Now I'm not going to go through the chart, but all of this is going to be available on twosleepers.com. Go to the section that says downloads and I will load up this uh, presentation for you to have. Uh, I'm going to give you some rules of thumb for pressure cook time so that you know uh, how, often, how long to cook. And then I'm going to show you how to adapt some recipes because really the point of this is that you shouldn't always need a recipe in order to make something. So my goal is to try to empower you to be able to cook on your own. So let's start with the difference between legumes, pulses, and dals, which of course I had to look up. Who knows these differences, right? Thank God for Wikipedia uh, and Google. That's what I did. So here's what I learned. So legume is anything that has a fruit in a pod. So uh, peanuts, soybeans, um, you know, all, all the other little things like, um, it, well, even chickpeas and uh, kidney beans, etc. cetera. The, the, the fruit is in the pod, and when it's in that pod and it's fresh, it's called a legume. So peanuts are legumes because they have a fruit in a pod. Confusingly enough, you take that very same fruit and you dry it, and it becomes a dry bean, and now all of a sudden it's known as a legume. Okay, so fresh soybean, uh, sorry, it's known as a pulse. So fresh soybean is a legume, and a dried soybean the, uh, is called a pulse. Dal is a sort of a ubiquitous term. So sometimes it just means anything that, you know, is a, a pulse or a legume. Uh, but I'm going to use the, the, the term dal for this presentation to mean the ones that are split in half because it has implications for cooking time. Okay, so, you know, none of this matters uh, from a cooking perspective except that the cook times are different but you know I think it's interesting information I always like to know these things so I figured you might okay so most beans can be used one of four different ways some of them more familiar with some are less familiar so let's look at chickpeas for example a chickpea could be used whole which is how we typically um, see them when they're sold dried you could split that in half uh, and then some other dals like urad dal u-r-a-d uh, black ram lentils those can either have skin on them or they can be without skin. And then sometimes, like chickpeas again, you could grind them to get a flour, okay? So you've got the whole dal, you've got the split dal. The split dal can be with skin, it can be without skin, or you can use it as a flour. So one pulse, four lives. I wasn't kidding about that. If what the, the reason you should care about this is it affects cook times. So for example, for large whole beans like chickpeas or um, kidney beans, you need and a pressure cooker somewhere between 20-30 minutes depending on how soft and tender and mushy you want them. Uh, for the split dolls, it's going to take closer to 2-3-5 minutes to cook them. Um, and if it's ground, of course, you wouldn't be pressure cooking it at all, so that's kind of a moot, moot point. But you just need to remember kind of, you know, the different uh, forms are going to impact different cook times. Okay, I want to show you this example. So in this case, this is the urad dal that I was talking about, okay? Here it is whole, here it is split with skin, and here it is without its skin. There's green mung beans, those are whole. When they're split, you see the inside yellow dal, and those are brown or uh, uh, green lentils. When they're split, they have that red lentil inside. The split dal is red, which even more confusingly, when you cook it, it turns yellow. So all of these things, they're actually, these three are the same, those two are the same, those two are the same, which can get confusing, but pretty soon you'll start to recognize kind of their forms. Chickpeas come in a variety of colors. So we're more used to white ones, but they make them white, green, black, um, brown. And then, um, you know, when it's split, those are called yellow split peas. Tuar dal, pigeon peas, uh, are most often cooked in Indian households or for every day, uh, and you mostly encounter them split, although you can buy whole pigeon peas. And then things like, um, Black eyed peas and the ones on the other side, azuki beans, or they're called lal chori in Hindi, uh, those are typically only found whole. Okay, so you'll start to recognize the forms pretty soon. And then again, you know, I have this uh, in this document as a visual glossary, so when you download it, you'll have examples. And what you're going to start to see is that green mung bean that was whole looks like that when it's split. Brown lentils look like that when they're split. Um, there's beluga lentils, red calypso beans, soybeans. So there's a huge variety of beans that are possible, and I have two pages of those 
um, to kind of show you what they look like. Now I want you to start noticing a couple of things about the size. These pinto beans and these red kidney beans, they're whole beans, they're about the same size. Um, those French poi lentils, those are much smaller even though they're whole beans. And then the black eyed peas are kind of in the middle. So the way to sort in your head is, is it a whole dal? If it's whole, if it's whole bean rather, uh, is it large or is it small? Uh, and then of course if it's split, that's a whole different uh, time perspective. So once you start to understand that size matters in cooking, right, it, it makes the question of to soak or not to soak a lot easier. So here's what I do. I tend to soak the big um, beans. So for example, chickpeas, pinto beans, black uh, beans, and red kidney beans, great northern beans, those I will soak. Uh, they take a lot longer to, to uh, absorb that water. You can do it without, uh, without soaking in a pressure cooker. What's gonna happen is you're gonna need to increase the cook time somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes. And what we have found um, from just experimenting and posting recipes uh, on twosleevers.com and on the Facebook group is that people get variable results. So most of my recipes have been tested over and over and what we were finding was with whole beans, I used to say don't soak and it worked for some people and it didn't work for some people and we couldn't understand why until we realized that it was the age of the lentil. Uh, so since you don't know how old your beans are, how long they've been sitting in the store before you bought them, for the bigger beans you should soak. Now I'm not very organized, I can't plan the night before and so I have a hybrid soaking method. And what I do with those large beans is that I soak them in boiling hot water, as, as hot water as you can get from your tap or heat it up in your microwave or stove top. Soak them for an hour. And what I find is I can't tell the difference between beans that have been soaked overnight and ones that have gone through a really quick soak. So for the big ones, you should soak. But the smaller beans, even if they're whole, you do not need to soak. So of course, split dolls, you never need to soak. But even the slightly smaller ones like black eyed peas, azukis, um, those uh, smaller beans, even though they're whole mung beans or that dal, I don't usually soak those and they work just fine. So this again is something that, um, you know, um, we're not going to do an entire language primer here, but a few things are important to understand, which is that when we're describing uh, beans and lentils, we use two different criteria, if you will, to describe them. Part of it is the form and then part of it is the color. So is the bean whole? Is it with skin? Is it skinless? And so the terms you'll encounter for, let's say, let's take mung beans, okay, green mung beans. So um, a sabat mung, sabat means whole, chilka means with skin, and dhuli means washed, which means without skin, okay? So you might see mung, and then you might see all of these things in front of it confusing you entirely. Uh, it's simply describing the form. Sabat mung, uh, chilka mung, and dhuli mung are, are the same dal in three different formats. And then color, so when you're describing chana, for example, chickpeas, we might say safed chana for white, Hara chana for green, kala chana for black, um, and it, again, so we might say, you know, the form of it first, and then we might say the color. So this little handy dandy glossary that you can download tells you the different terms. So for example, adzuki is alal chori, um, rajma means red kidney beans, a horse gram is kulti or kulit, um, batana is dry green peas, etc. So anyway, you can download this, and when next time you go shopping at an Indian grocery store, you'll have your handy dandy shopping list with you. For pressure cook times, so if uh, you are able to follow a well-written recipe, of course you won't need this. The reason I'm providing these rules of thumb are if you're trying to uh, make up your own recipe. And in that case, here's some rules of thumb that might work. So again, split your dal into, is it a split dal? Is it a small whole bean or is it a large whole bean? And you'll see the times on those. Now, if you're trying to get a really, really creamy dal, give it on the top end of the five minutes. Um, you know, beans, for example, if you want the, your chickpeas and a Texas caviar, for example, which is on twosleevers.com. If you want that well cooked, give it 15 minutes, otherwise 10. And then large whole beans take, you know, 25, 30, sometimes 35 minutes after they've been soaked. Gives you some examples of which ones go in there. And again, these are rules of thumb for the dal. So one cup of dal to one and a half to two cups, depending on how liquid you want it. Uh, for smaller beans, one cup of beans, two to three cups of water. And then for the larger ones, one cup soaked beans to three or four cups of water if you want it. Now, if you're trying to make something that is dry, so I have a chana salad recipe in my book, uh, as well as on twosleepers.com. So in that case, I know I want um, to cook the chana and then I want them dry. So if you're making hummus, for example, same thing. In a situation like that, what I do is I put in a lot of water and I plan to drain it afterwards. Uh, or you can do pot and pot, but this extra water and then draining and using that aquafile that bean water for something else is not a bad way to go to be able to control how much water is in the final dish. So in terms of recipes and adaptations, here's what you need to understand is that any split dal recipe that you have that you like will work with any other split dal. And they won't taste the same. Actually, those dals have such a different flavor um, that 
the same recipe made the exact same way but with a different dal is going to taste different so if you take my chana masala recipe and put in uh, red uh, kidney beans instead uh, it'll be entirely different tasting because what comes through is the taste of the bean okay so any split dal recipe will work with another any small bean recipe will work with another and any whole bean recipe will work with another so feel free to switch black beans pinto beans kidney beans and chickpeas, great northern beans, amongst each other to get different flavors, um, and, you know, and so on and so forth. So again, the whole point of this is to be able to give you ideas uh, for how to adapt your own recipes. Now, if you want to get started with something, I have this Indian Instant Pot Cookbook that's on Amazon. Um, it has lots and lots of dal recipes. Um, including the ones that you see here. Some of these you've had in restaurants, some of those you only have in uh, the homes of people that uh, have learned to cook this way. So dal fry, chana masala, chana salad, um, uh, dal makhni, etc. But then there's some other ones that you might not encounter in restaurants. So you can cook uh, Indian food home style. And then on twoslavers.com there's several other recipes, including for things like a poblano chicken soup, that's a low carb soup actually, where I use navy beans to uh, give it a little bit of creaminess uh, and cauliflower. And so that it's a low carb soup, but it has a lot of body uh, and then hummus and then you know koshari texas caviar stuff like that so you can use beans in a lot of ways if you're uh, unsure about how to get started use one of these recipes and then over time you'll have the confidence to be able to do it on your own um, if you would like to follow along with the other videos that I do, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Pinterest, I'm on Instagram, I'm on YouTube. Uh, I'm in a lot of places. It's easy to find me. Uh, Urvashi Bitre is not a very common name, only one on Google. Uh, and I hope that this uh, lesson on lentils was helpful for you. And uh, again, I'm Urvashi Bitre. My blog is twosleavers.com. And I hope this was helpful and I will see you soon. Thank you.